I have four motions. The first is to request that the Ministry of Health provide funding to better assist us with the residents. We have, as you know, Speaker, we have uh, a good number of our residents who have uh, dementia and mental health issues. In fact, more than any other landlord in Toronto, we may be the biggest landlord, but we are also the one that has the most problems. The second, to request that the city manager, in consultation with the solicitor, expand the system that we already have of automatic uh, withdrawal of t C Could you please stop the talking? It's really distracting. Um, to expand the system of automatic withdrawal of uh, TCHC rental payments prior to the residents on social assistance receiving their, their benefits. Thirdly, request that the CEO of uh, TCHC to ensure that during, sometime during the year before a resident turns 65, that staff help them prepare for the change in income, which will inevitably result in a rental increase. And, and fourthly, that uh, the deputy city manager report to a uh, CDEV committee on how the practices of TESS support the maintenance of clients' rental payment in good standing and the protocol between TESS and TCHC. Um, I also want to put you on notice, Speaker, that I'm going to be uh, moving at TCHC, because we are both on the board, the establishment of the Commissioner of Housing Equity. This is something that Justice Lesage had pointed to and we failed to implement. Uh, I'm also going to be moving a full Im implementation of all of Justice Lesage's um, recommendations. This has been a chasm that we have un been unable to, to breach. Eviction should not be used as a first resort. It should be used as a last resort. It is now illegally being used by TCHC as a threat to change tenants' behavior. We heard over and over again today that we are committing illegal acts. That has to stop. I have in my case files notes from 2010 where the gentleman in question in uh, the Ombudsman's excellent report over and over again was identified as being a vulnerable tenant. TCHC knew this. He was horribly treated. He, when he had accidents, and I have all the particulars, uh, took himself to hospital, his door was broken down, he was robbed <clears throat> while he was in hospital, and he was put in a situation where he could not, because of the change lock, get back into his apartment. He had to remove his air conditioning unit and crawl <laughs> through the window. This is not how we ought to be treating frail, frail and vulnerable tenants. Jane Finch Legal Services. How many times does Le Jane Finch Legal Services get involved every day with vulnerable tenants, especially seniors? They Center for Spanish-Speaking People at uh, Jane and Wilson. How many times do they get involved every day? Jane Finch Community and Family Center. They get involved every day, and I could go on and on. The protocols are supported by the community agencies. They're just not followed by TCHC. They're just not followed. The standards for repayment recommended by Justice Lesage, they're not followed. To minimize the disconnect between our policies and our practices, this is something that Mr. Jones is trying to come to terms with. But at Jane Finch and in the Downsview community, these protocols are not followed. And I don't know what happens at Scarborough, but I would suggest the same. The prior undertakings and the promises of TCHC remain unfulfilled. I don't know how many times men and women have to die while in our custody, and I use the term loosely, but it's happened twice too often in Downsview, and it's got to stop because I have two buildings now, Arletta Manor, in which the residents are living in fear. And what happens to the staff that do this to our residents? They get promoted. What message does that send? How dare we 
And we are all culpable in this. Really, how dare we?